Hello everyone, and welcome back. Let me quickly just change this so I can load that lunar save. To the moon. Uh, PAP that is certainly not, wait, is what the FASA ascent stage? Oh, you're not in the stream yet. Ah, you are. Cool. Um, is what the fast ascent stage? Because I'm confused. I mean, this. if you mean this thing, if you mean what I posted in the Discord, then no. If you mean this thing, then also no. This is just the Mark I advanced lander can. Um, that hatch is open. That hatch is open. Both say hatch status open. And yet, for some reason, oh, now we can transfer. Apparently, you have to reload a save. That's super weird. Beyond weird. Also, why did it say interrupted? Anyway, we're going to now transfer pilot over. Yeah, now it's working fine. That's so weird. There's some bug where it didn't... Where it didn't work on the first docking, but on reloading the save, it's working fine. <laughs> Beyond weird. Also, I forgot to retract the antennas, but <laughs> it turns out that it's okay. <laughs> they just have clearance. So... Let's go ahead and cross our fingers. And do the landing. In fact, I'm vaguely tempted to transfer even more locks in LH2 over. Because it's not like we're going to use all we got. But Maybe we will. So, let's close the hatches. Control from here. Undock. Turn on RCS and back slowly away. Ooh, I don't even remember what the name of the person in the other thing was. Uh, Randy Campbell. Okay. So long, Randy. So it took us long enough to dock that, oh, wait, no, we're coming retrograde. Heh, yes. So we can perform our retro burn here. Which is not the most efficient thing we've got, but will land super near every other thing we've ever landed on the moon. All right, let's... What height is that? 30 kilometers. All right, so I think we want to go a little bit more severe than that.
23. All right, so that's all good. Well, here we go, folks. We still have plenty of delta V in that. We could have, wait, did I forget to shoot? No, I did transfer. Yeah, we could have transferred another 100 liters of each and been fine. Them's the brakes. Pap, I don't know. I don't... I am humiliated to say this, but I don't actually know the, the moon state when Apollo 11 was launched. It's entirely possible that they were using bad, bad stock footage of the moon. Okay. Execute the node. All right. So it says 820, but we're actually going to burn the thing dry. We have six ignitions left. We'll be fine. Off we go to the moon. I think we've already used a bunch of... Oh no, because we put, we put um, 200 kilograms aboard. That's why the Delta V went down, I think. No pilots aboard? The heck? Was the other guy the pilot? I thought I thought Harold Chavez was a pilot. <sighs> well, doesn't matter. And our inclination is 151.915. All right. Well, here we go, guys. Yeah, I'm going to see it in regular because it's already done in IMAX near me. Didn't have a chance to see it last week. Would like to have seen it in IMAX. All right. All right. Yeah, it was it was released for regular theaters, so I'm going to see it this week. But I missed it in IMAX last week. Is what I'm saying. Now it'd be nice if I found a nice big crater to land in, but. We're just in this lumpy area of the moon, and it'll have to do. Because I don't see any particularly awesome craters nearby. How many lights do we have left? Five?
I guess we don't want to take too much in the way of gravity losses. Oh, it's beginning to get super lumpy. It'd be nice if we could land in that crater, but we're not going to. Come on. What the hell happened? All right, so we can abort to orbit, but I really don't particularly want to fly this mission again. I really don't particularly want to fly this mission again. So I'm just going to load the save. Wow. Talk about... Perfect timing for a failure. That's impressive. start our burn when we hit about 20 kilometers. Yeah, the point of ignition failure is um, that something in the igniter broke. Because if ignition failure just meant it didn't ignite, then an engine with infinite ignitions, it literally wouldn't matter. Um, but I also think there probably should be a failure that it just failed to ignite that time and you can try to relight it. And that would, I think, would be something more sensible to have. But as Ferrum is fond of pointing out, um, most engine failures should just result in engine explodes. <laughs> like, it's weird that we have failures other than your engine is toast now. All right, 20 kilometers true. We'll wait a little bit longer, down to 15 kilometers true. Yeah, we could have given it way more locks in LH2, which I will do next time. All right, we're going to pitch up a little bit. Oh, we could have made it all the way to that big crater basin. That would have been nice.
all right this is our sync rate is decreasing because I have this on all right suicide burn countdown increasing that's not really relevant because we're we don't have constant thrust to weight ratio and I believe this assumes a constant thrust to weight thr thrust to weight ratio Yeah, I'm thinking it, when I restart and stream again, I might do a Soviet engines only thing. It's been a while since I've flown Soviet engines. The tech tree testing campaign was the glory of Soviet space program. Actually, I think we want what sync rate we can get. Yeah, we're going to land well short of that crater. Hopefully on a flat surface. Kind of can't tell. Yeah, so we have 600 meters per second spare in this stage, so I could have dumped a lot of locks in LH2. Hey, NorCal Planner. Into the... So I will not feel bad giving it some extra when I swap back to it, if I feel like I need to. gear out. Down we come. Hopefully it's moderately flat under us, because I got no clue. Alright, when that goes to 10 seconds, we'll light him up. Stage has hit the ground. I guess at the five second count. Oh, whoops. No, 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 no. Didn't even notice we'd landed because I was all on the instruments. All right. 
So, we have now landed on the moon. Congratulations to us. Ladder out. I guess something bounced. Uh... All right, it is the 19th of January, 1964, and human beings have landed on the moon. Rita Marshall has landed on the moon. And boy, is she happy. Harold Chavez. has landed on the moon. He does not seem quite so happy. Uh, he's pretty happy. <laughs> Alright. Let's plant a flag. Why does it have that as the flag type when I specifically selected NASA? We've planted a flag. Uh, we planted a flag. Why is that not checked? That's super weird. Pap, do you have any idea why that's not getting checked? Oh, it's checked when we're back in the capsule. That's pretty weird. Uh, and yeah, I got the surface sample. Oh wait, I didn't take any EVA reports. That was stupid of me. Yeah, for sure we're keeping that thing. Oh, we can transmit it. Or not. <laughs> well, we'll transmit it once we get back aboard. Lunar gravity. All right, let's jetpack. That jetpack is way too strong. I should not be able to escape the moon's gravity with a jetpack. We really need to nerf that jetpack. All right, so this was a nice demo test flight. We planted a flag, we took a surface sample, we took an EVA report. Let's go home. Yeah, so that flag is now checked off as soon as we're back in the capsule, in, in the lander. Super weird. All right, so let's retract the ladder. And set that as target. And what, if, what, hap what would happen if we did this? Uh, No, we're not waiting seven days. 
and sadly there's nothing else we can let P PVG do for us even though I'd like it to do the inclination matching for us um, So I think what we need to do is launch. Shoot, I don't remember what heading we were even flying. Um, Blowfish, it's totally possible. That's one of the reasons why I made Kerbals actually configurable by CFG. And then so we can actually do stuff and have part upgrades, I think, and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, so I think we want to go something like 300 degrees. And we'll try to match inclination as we fly, I guess. Uh, so, normally we would stay like a day or two on the lunar surface, but this is just a test mission. Flags and footprints. We proved it's possible. We only used about 150 meters per second to land, so we have tons extra. So, man, we really... This lander is way over spec and the, the orbiter is way under spec Uh... All right, let's do this. All right, so what is our, so that's at 0 0.04. What is our heading right now? Our heading is at 285.9. It's to the left of our surface velocity. Let's bring it back up. Nope, wrong way. This is an interesting lander design, but hey, it works. There we go. Nah, I didn't loft enough. Yep, totally didn't loft enough.
All right, I don't know wh in which direction I need to dogleg, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to match planes once I get into orbit, even though it'll be a little expensive. Um, but... Pap, uh, I understand. That makes a lot of sense. In its weird, weird way. Yeah, so this is... This is a really... Really low ascent. Oh. Was not paying attention to my inclination. Lamont, if you're watching this, it would be awesome if we could use PPG's land solver to... Or, or... Yeah. To control my launch azimuth, even if I'm not using it to control my pitch. be nice if relative inclination told me which way doesn't. Oh, hang on. This is a solvable problem. So we want the AN to actually be close to us, and then we can... Nope. This way. Yeah. Then we can fix it. I can dog like visually. All right, it's full point two degrees. Match planes with target. And it's in that direction, and we also need to go prograde about 300 meters per second, I think. Oh no, that's way too much. So what, here's what we want to do. We want to circularize, and we want to match planes with target. So it's minus 10. So that will circularize us and match planes. Boy, are we low. What 
is going on here? Why did that not actually circularize us? What on earth is going on here? That will do. All right. So, hum and transfer in one day and six hours. We can do better than that, I think. We're a little low. Ten kilometers true. No account plan or that sounds pretty cool. Alright, but it looks like we don't really have much of an option other than to wait that that one day because um Oh, that's in two hours. That's not a day. <laughs> I like that better. <laughs> I like that answer better. All right, let's hope that we're high enough that we won't hit anything weird. Uh, sorry for basically totally ignoring chat that whole time. Um, yeah, it'd be great if we could turn the Kerbals into humans. That's that's a long-held dream. Um, Okay, that lander is gradually catching up on us. All right, let's jump to it. Spinny, spinny, spinny. Okay. All right, Mech Jeb, let's see if you can execute this one at least. And we have plenty of Delta V to rendezvous and stuff with. So we probably had. We had about 300 meters per, no, we had almost 600 meters per second spare in the crasher stage. We have 400 meters per second, no, well actually we'll probably have about 350 spare in this stage, so. We over-engineered a wee little bit. Why is it? Oh, it keeps trying to set SAS. <sighs> we need to fix that part of it. I 
guess the sun is just catching the moon a little bit there. All right. Now, separation is five kilometers. That's pretty good. Let's match velocities with target at closest approach. Another 20 meters per second. The heck did it put the maneuver? Oh, right there. All right, that's fine. So let's do this. We can only warp 10x this low. That's annoying. I do want to transmit that EVA report. keep the surface sample. gave us a nice little bit of science. All right, we finally went above 30 kilometers. Now, RVL minus. Whoa, that's kind of bad. We have a way higher thrust to weight ratio than I thought we did. meters per second closure right. All right, so we have a good eight, nine minutes um, before it gets dark. So we're going to burn some velocity, burn some delta V because we've got tons. Oh, Blowfish, you're absolutely right. That's brilliant. Why didn't I think of that? That's brilliant. A little less thrust weight ratio is nice. Here we come. Whoa, that 
house. Good we weren't too close. <laughs> Jeb is a little bit OP here. <laughs> All right. Now. Set his target. aligned. Let's check vertical. Vertical is not aligned. Let's align vertical. Vertical seems pretty aligned. Horizontal is way not aligned anymore. Now it's pretty aligned. Vertical's out of alignment again. Now verticals aligned. I wonder if that thing is rotating and that's why we keep getting out of alignment.
Sweet, we made it. Science. Gets transferred over. All right. Now, so we can use the lander for seventy six meters per second. if we want to, <laughs> to help punch us out a little bit more. But I don't think it's worth it. I don't think I want to bother. <laughs> really don't think it's worth it. So open the hatches. Transfer the crew. And it's back to the same thing where you have to reload for those hatches to actually acknowledge the fact that they're open, which is a super weird bug. So let's try that again then. Uh, I guess we're gonna do an EVA. There's one. No. Nope. Wait, now it works. Because we swapped vessels. <laughs> Apparently that somehow made it work. I'm beyond understanding. Alright, let's close the hatches. Ditch the lander. into the moon. Goodbye, Lander. You're going to make a big boom. Now, let's return from a moon. Seven ninety nine thirty one. Hopefully, we'll have enough locks in LH two for the fuel cells. Uh, so first of all, we're going to fill everything up. All right, 
So this stuff should all stay maxed. Fuel cell is on. And recharging us. All right. That's in only nine minutes. Let's check what it's actually doing. actually show me the ah there that's about right let's do this going to use up as much RCS propellant as possible because we've brought quite a lot. Every little bit helps. And we want 60, I think. So, we're on our way. That's in four days and 17 hours. So, we could have gone home a little faster, used up a little more LOX and LH2, but I'm saving it for the fuel cells.
Yeah, we're basically just sipping. We're not even using that much. So let's warp here. And we still have plenty. Good. All my fears about this mission are unfounded. So, 60 kilometer perigee. Time to perigee, one hour and 50 minutes. So at an hour out, let's actually decouple stuff. And let's orient. So we know what orientation to be in. Yeah, you can warp through SOI. It's actually safer to warp through them than not. You just need to be at fairly low warp. That's been true for a couple KSP versions. get only about an hour out and then ditch things. Actually I think I want to be more like 30 minutes. Well actually Maybe only 15 minutes from inter from there. All right. Say goodbye to the mission module and the service module. They served us well. So turn that off. Decouple the SM. Oh, no, that decoupled the mission module. Did it? No, that didn't do anything. That decoupled the service module. Why is this RCS not doing anything? Do we not have enough avionics or something? There's the service module. Ah, and it has no module command. Ah, yeah, so I need to change that so it supports the mission. Or just decouple the mission module first. That would work too. Yeah, that bounced us into... <laughs> Yeah, I need to decouple the other in the other order. But anyway, we're now free flying at 2,500 kilometers altitude. Let's orient to the node. Force a roll. And also, I'm going to change this parachute to be sane. That's better. Let's go ahead and re-enter. And I'll turn on descent mode.
that's sort of weird with the clouds all right now we're going to go ahead and change to SVL minus with 15 degrees up pitch and turn on descent mode in we come only 10.5 km sec that's super weird stuff with the clouds I don't know what's quite what's, looks like even scatter or bugged out a little bit because we went to the moon and back maybe oh there it goes now they look fine that was just the weird inter interface thing Pap, I'm not sure if there's any argument for keeping them even other than that like symmetry is kind of cool I don't think it necessarily gives a gameplay advantage it just depends on what you want at the time So let's make this node go away. And we'll stand ready to. Oops, that needs to get turned off. There it goes. Everything else. You know what? Let's just turn that off and I'll manually control roll because I'm tired of this. Wait a minute. Why are the parachutes burning? <laughs> that hasn't happened before. That's a weird bug. Are they getting convective heating? So, step one. Ignore max temperature. Step two. Display data in action menus. Yeah, they're getting a little convective flux. That's beyond weird. They should not be. 2.81 2.75 what's this thing oh it's just because they're getting a tiny little bit of it but why were they heating up so much why is the exposed skin so hot weird Oops. Oh, shoot. Bit late on the spinny spinny. Uh oh. That's bad. We might actually genuinely skip out of the atmosphere. because I was worrying about the parachutes and not paying attention.
yeah, this is sort of bad. Guess we're going to go around again. Dagnabbit. This is what I get for paying attention to the parachutes instead of paying attention of, for when to flip. We're going to go around again. Hopefully we have enough juice for it. We should, I think. The following retirements have occurred. He's literally on this vessel. <laughs> How can he retire if he's... <laughs> uh, how, did th how does that make any sense? I thought he had a later retirement date than that. Well, we'll find out. Whatever. Out and around we go. Yeah, they don't actually retire until they get home, I think. Well, let's... I'd better check. Where's the hatch on this thing? Apparently there isn't a hatch on this thing. That's fine. Nope! He was yanked literally right out of the capsule. That's super weird. I thought we didn't have them submit the resignation mid-flight, but <laughs> apparently we do. I think for my test I went two to one. Whoa! The parachutes blew up. Frickin' wonderful. That's, I don't know what's going on there because I've done sandbox re-entries of this just to test it out and the parachutes never blew up. So something was weird with this setup. So we hit three Gs on the last re-entry. This one will be pretty mild, I think. But at this point, I kind of don't care because we no longer have parachutes. So I'll figure out a way to deal with the fact that we don't have parachutes.
Yeah, he did retire just in time. Oh, great. And the fact that... <laughs> The fact that we had to go around again meant that now we're over land. This is just beyond perfect. So I don't I'm not actually sure how I'll fix the the no parachutes problem. I might have to reload. Which I rather hope I won't have to. see if hack gravity can fix it for us. Blowfish, that would work better to splash down. But that would require us actually splashing. Which we ain't gonna. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, is gravity is... Is, do, is hack gravity, but... Well, crash tolerance is 9 in it, so we probably could just hyper edit to do this. I get away with just doing it this way? Let's find out. Yes, we're doing it this way. Okay. First human moon landing. Congratulations, you have done it. Human beings have set foot. Have soot foot? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I mean, given how fiery that reentry was, soot might be correct, but. Monumental occasion, you should be proud of your achievement. I am kind of proud of my achievement. So, at least that part's correct. All right, we did it. Congratulations to us. We landed on the moon, and we returned safely with an asterisk to Earth. Let's recover the capsule. All right, so it has been a wild ride. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. I think at this point I'm going to bring this campaign to a close because RP1 has moved on and I can no longer keep updating from it and it's time to start a new campaign. Um, we still have our Mars Polar Orbiter that I haven't actually done its maneuver yet. We got an awful lot of science from this. 
we recovered $11 million from that thing. That's not bad. Harold Chavez is already well gone. Their retirements are late. Harold Chavez isn't even showing up anymore. I guess, I don't know why he retired so early. Because I thought he was in the second group, which is these people. But, I don't know. So anyway. Anyway. On this happy high note, it is time to call it quits for Rusty RP1. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll be streaming some other stuff soon. Um, but that does it for this campaign. Bye-bye.